I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from me and this has been like a therapy session. What's a tougher fight then? They're very different styles in Michael Condon and Maurizio Lara. But going into this, what's the harder fight for Lee? Yeah, Michael Collins a, a, a hell of a lot better boxer than uh, Mauricio Lyon. If you go back to the press conference in the build up to that fight, I said that Big Collins was a better puncher than what he's given credit for. May not be as big of a puncher as Mauricio Lara, but the IQ, he, play, he can play his attacks off of each other, he can disguise his work, set his work up very well. Extremely versatile, he's got a good coach who's going to you know, pick out certain things of, of his opponent. That, that he can try to exploit. Um, I think when Richie O'Lara, what you see is what you get. Um, so yeah, you know, I understand people look at Lara because of the highlight reel. But um, Lara got hurt off Emilio Sanchez. Nobody's talking about that. A super bantamweight, non-puncher, hurt to the head and to the body. Got stopped in the round by Elliot Chavez, but people are pointing out Lee was getting dropped by a world-class fighter like Nick Conlon. Um, but then, not talking about the resilience it showed off for that, and their, their experiences and, and things like that, but it's completely different, as you said, like Nick Conlon's an intelligent guy, hard to prepare for, because he's very versatile. You have to prepare for three or four different type, types of uh, fighters, or attributes, or styles. Um, but again, Mick Conlon and Josh Warrington are the two fights that they're, they're Lee's ticket to the, to the city ground fight. It didn't make sense for us to risk that, not having that, by, or wasting those opportunities by having that as, as the fight that wasn't available to go at the city ground had to be at the arena. Is that another reason he wanted such a tough fight to go in as underdog? Because mentally, if he takes his eye off the ball, he won't be able to get to that city ground. Yeah, well you have to look at it as well, like, value, what Lee's getting paid, he's getting paid an extortionate amount of money for this fight. Um, more than the Kiko fight? Yeah, hell of a lot more, hell of a lot more. Um, and I guarantee, talking about Richard Lara's power, he's a, I'm not saying that he's not, he's a big puncher, dangerous fighter. But I guarantee if you ask Josh Warrington who was a bigger puncher, I guarantee he'd say Kiko Martinez. Um, just as dangerous, uh, Kiko, uh, sort out with Keith Galahad, and Josh Warren, yeah, Josh Warren, and yep. Josh Warren and his jaw. Um, we see what he done to Jordan Gill the other day as well. Yeah, we didn't get to see how um, how the Lara fight was going to play out, the second Lara fight with Warrington was going to play out, but um, yeah, it was the next biggest fight. He ticked all the boxes for what Lee wanted. Um, so yeah. Look, everyone's saying it's Lee Wood's power versus Lara's power. We know the one punch power of Lee Wood because just from that last round, the kind of the, the closing moments was fresh in everyone's memory from Lee Wood in the ring is his power. But is it a case of being smart as well against Bronco? Yeah, for sure. You know, having a, having a game plan set out and, and knowing how to create scenarios that are going to favour Lee and how to defuse scenarios that favour Mauricio Lara is what's going to be the difference in the fight. We've been on then, we're watching uh, the Friday night, we're watching uh, Frank Warren's show. Junior Alois, he uh, done the business in 30 seconds. I know he's been working with you and Barry. Barry's down there and Weston's probably going to be on in about 20 minutes by the looks of it. So just a quick little assessment on that. Yeah, good performance from Alois. Um, 19 years old. Um, a positive future. It's only been a few weeks that we've been working with him, um, but we're excited for it. And as you said, we're some Barney Smith boxing, boxing chocolate. <laughs> Frank seriously sees something here in Western, doesn't he? He puts them all on all of his big shows. I know this one's slightly smaller on the York Hall tonight, but it's keeping him active. Surely you're going to want five, six top fights for Western this year. Yeah, Frank Warren's doing a phenomenal job for Western. He gave him some fantastic slots on, on the cards as well. On some massive cards, balls on a card like tonight. He's getting prime time slots, so uh, Frank Warren's doing a fantastic job, but he's a special, special talent. Uh, he literally just turned 19 years old last month. Um, 
and, and delivering the goods. Big future for it. I think uh, everyone's kind of been on edge around the hotel this week. The McCormack's uh, been going loud as ever around the hotel. Obviously, Pat's got his date, which is the word on the two of those. Yeah, um, we had a few things with paperwork with Luke. We were looking like that, that's finally getting sorted out, looking positive. Um, and Pat's proxy in March 18th, that's now been announced up in Newcastle. So, looking forward to it, you know, they've been consistent in the gym. Especially Luke with some of the problems he's had, he's been consistently kept in the gym. I think that's going to pay dividends once, once he gets in the gym. As a trainer, obviously, you're looking at the work Luke's doing in the gym, and it's been a bit of a turbulent time for him outside the ring, trying to sort out deals, paperwork, etc. Is it frustrating for you to see your fighter doing so much work without the end product of being able to step in there? I think a great thing with that is Luke is Luke almost knows and can see the work everybody else is putting on. You know, he, he'll say to me before I actually say it to him, hey, this is going to pay dividends. You know, I'll yeah. stay in the gym and it's, it's going to show, you know. Um, people have this representation of them being wild and all the rest of it, but when they're in the gym, they, they work, you know, and they work really hard. And, uh, as I said, especially with Luke being in the situation he's been, been in, um, to be as consistent as he has been in the gym. That that's, says a lot to me. Um, and again, especially with Pat, everybody knows the, the special talent that he is as well. And um, building some nice momentum and he's just continuing to do so. The important thing is moving him at the, at the right speed. Um, not too quickly, not too slowly. Um, and you have to take that fight by fight because there's certain, certain things that you can tick off along the way that we want to see him uh, experience. Um, so we'll have to judge that fight by fight for how quickly we'll move. Just to finish off, I want to get your opinions on a few topics of the wider boxer scene. It's come out in the past week that someone who used used to work with, Josh Taylor, is now not fighting Jack Catch when it look, looks like it'll be fighting Tiafimo Lopez. I know the WBO have now ordered it, but it looked like they was going down that route anyway. Have you got a comment on that, just why he's not fighting Jack? I just think, you know, the reality is there's probably um, dialogue between the WBO and the top rank and mm. all the rest of it. So when, this, when Josh picks up his injury, um, I imagine that there had already been some dialogue with the WBO and top rank that this fight, we're going to order this fight now. So they obviously started taking steps in, in the direction to to making that happen. Josh has proved for his career. Very, people are very quick to forget. Josh has boxed everybody in uh, how quickly Josh was moved. Josh isn't afraid to box anybody. He's uh, a fighter through and through. Um, it's an unfortunate situation for Jack, of course, and I do feel for him and I understand. Um, but at the same time, people shouldn't forget um, you know, what Josh Taylor's about because he's shown that for his career. I know you believe that Josh took it that night, but a lot of people don't. Is it a shame as fans, as boxing, and for Jack, obviously, that we're not getting to see the rematch? How many rematches do we see straight off the bat? Mm. Often there's fights in between. And, you know, that fight isn't completely gone and never coming back. You know? uh, the history is there, the money's there, so I'm sure of that. We will see that fight again at some point. Um, I just think that again, that's something that fans can quickly forget as well. Another person you know very well, Tyson Fury. It looks like his fight against Alexander Usyk, if it takes place, that will be happening in Wembley. It was not happening in, in Saudi Arabia. I spoke to Eddie Hearn today and he said the reason it's not happening in, in Saudi Arabia is because Anthony Joshua's not <laughs> fighting in that fight and Saudi won't put up the money because of Anthony's name value. Do you believe that Joshua's name value, especially in that part of the world, is a greater than Tyson's? I don't know. I don't know. Eddie and whoever's putting on these fights, these are the people that, that know the guys that are interested in making the fights. I don't know, but um, it doesn't matter where it lands, it's a huge fight anywhere. We should appreciate his boxing there. Everyone's got their own opinions on it, but do you believe that fight will happen on 29th of April, Wembley? Yeah, I don't see why not.
just to finish up then, we uh, just spoke about Tyson Fury. He's kind of coming off of the back of the Derek Chisora fight and now stepping into that Usyk fight. How hard is it going to be just for him in this fight to kind of get the job done, undisputed, and then move on to like Anthony Joshua? I know he said he's dead to me, but this year will we get big heavyweight fights? Moving on from Usyk, what happens? Which is moving on from Usyk? Moving on, if, if the Usyk fight him. happens, will Tyson Fury carry on and fight the likes of Joshua? He said he's dead to me, but will he carry on? I don't know, I can't answer the question. I don't think Tyson can answer the question. I think if you ask him today, you get a different answer to what you get tomorrow. So um, you just have to take it fight by fight, step by step, and um, hopefully you get to see the fights that you want to see. Excellent. Ben, finally, prediction for tomorrow night, mate? Uh, Lee Wood by stoppage. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you to IFL TV and best of luck tomorrow night, Jim, mate. No problem, mate. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session.